Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from March 2024, paper 4, variant 2. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. In order to get maximum benefit from these videos or in order to understand physics in a better way, always do questions first of all by yourself. Not only one time, you can try two times, three times by yourself. So try to understand where do you struggle. In physics, the best way to solve problems is or the way we solve problems. First of all, you need to understand the English language. Not only English, I mean question can be in any language. So you need to understand language of the question first of all mean what question is so this is the first thing so little bit spend time on that and write down what is given to you and what you need to find out so this is first step and the second thing is understanding of physics so then you need to look at the question based on given data and based on what you need to find you need to use the physics related to that after that you have to use algebra means you need to simplify and finally you need to do some arithmetic means basic calculations to find the answer so in this case you can see physics is just one part to master that part you need practice so if you practice with understanding not just always copy from the mark scheme you will develop your understanding because as i often used to say physics is like a tool everyone can have the tool it means everyone can have the formulae and equations but understanding of physics depends on use of the tool. more you use the tool more you develop your understanding for physics you no need to memorize a lot of things as like in chemistry bio or other subjects but for physics you need only and only understanding and that understanding you can develop with practice not just looking at mark schemes i hope this makes sense and if you have any questions you can leave questions in comments about difficulties you're facing to learn physics and i will try to answer based on the difficulties you are facing in physics and if these videos are helping you please like and subscribe because your encouragement is very important let's study together let's improve together question 4 part a says three capacitors are connected as shown in figure 4.1 determine the total capacitance in microfarad of the network of three capacitors so first of all when network of capacitors is given to us we can figure out which capacitors are connected in parallel and which capacitors are connected in series so if you look at these two capacitors these two they are connected in parallel so we can simply say they are connected in parallel and then the total capacitance of these two is connected in series with this one so if i redraw this network so i will redraw like this so we have 45 so this one is 45 macrofarad and here we have resultant of two capacitors in parallel so that one is here and the resultant of these two because they are connected in parallel so it's just like a big plate simply you can imagine let me explain you just imagine we have two plates and here we have two plates so simply if you combine so this become a big plate so we need to add the capacitance of these two capacitors so this one is 30 microfarad so this is capacitor now what is the total capacitance so we will say c total now they are connected in series so they are connected in series so the c total will be equal to 1 over c total you can say this is one way to do this question this will be equal to 1 over 45 microfarad plus 1 over 30 micro Farad. So this is one way to answer as we have only two capacitors. They are connected in parallel So simply you can say C total. This will be equal to 45 microfarad multiplied by 30 microfarad 
divided by sum of these two. So we have 40 plus 30 microfarad. Now if we solve this one, we will get 18 microfarad. So this is the final answer. Unit is microfarad, so simply you can say this is 18. Quite straightforward question. So the concept is that when the network is given to you, look at the network, which capacitors are in series and which capacitors are in parallel. Then use the formula and you can find the final answer. Part B says a capacitor of capacitance 45 microfarad is connected to a variable power supply initially set at 8.0 volts. The output of the power supply increases so that the potential difference across the capacitor increases to 9.0 six volts calculate the increase in energy delta E stored in the capacitor so first of all we can simply say the initial energy stored in the capacitor when potential difference across capacitor is equal to 8 volts that will be equal to one half C V square so we can say this will be equal to one half and value of C we have that is 45 microfarad and value of V is 8 square and energy final e final we can say that will be equal to one half c v square so we can say this is v initial this is v final square so from here we can write on one half here we have 45 micro farad and here we have 9.6 square you can also directly do with this one you no need to plug in values you can simply use this with the help of this one, we can simply say delta E, this one will be equal to E final minus E initial. As you can see here, 1 by 2 C is common, so we can take, we can rewrite here, but I'm writing here, but you can simplify this one. So here we have V final square minus we have 1 half C, this is V initial square. 1 by 2 C is common, so we can take this out so here we have v final square so we can say v final square and here we have v initial square so we have v initial square so here we have v initial square now simply we need to plug in values so we have one half c is 45 microfarad and value of v final is 9.6 square and v initial is 8 square now if we simplify this one we will get our final answer that will be 6.3 times 10 to minus 4 joules so this is the final answer up to 2 sf so this is the final answer you also need to keep an eye on the given unit so this is very important one always keep an eye on the given unit in this case i have plugged in these values here you no need to plug in these values here simply after this one you can go to this part and you can simplify then you will be able to get this answer if you get given data this data has 2sf this has 2sf this one also has 2sf so the final answer can have 2sf or one more Part C says a sinusoidal AC power supply is connected to the input of a bridge rectifier. The output of the rectifier is connected to a load resistor. Complete the circuit in figure 4.2 by adding a capacitor to smooth the PD across the load resistor. To smooth the PD across this load resistor, capacitor should be connected in parallel with load resistor. So this is the first thing you need to understand. It has to be connected in parallel. So we can connect our capacitor here, but you cannot leave this circuit open. You have to close this circuit. So you need to draw the line here as well. So you need to close the circuit. So this is also very important one. You have to close the circuit. This should not be open. So if you draw this one in parallel and circuit is closed, you will get one mark. Second part says the variation with time t of the PDV of the smoothed output is shown in figure 4.3. Determine the time constant in milliseconds of the smoothing circuit. Actually, this is asking us to calculate the time constant of the capacitor. Now, if you look at this given figure, at this point we have maximum value of PD across capacitor and then this capacitor will discharge because the PD across capacitor and PD across resistor will be the same because they are connected in parallel. 
so at this point value of pd we have four so this is four volts then time is five milliseconds at this point value of pd is 3.2 volts and value of time we can find out value of time value of time from here we can find out so here is value of time so this is 13 milliseconds so we can find out discharging time from this point to this point so we can say delta t that will be equal to 13.0 minus 5 so this is equal to 8.0 milliseconds and value of potential we have 4 then is 3.2 now simply we have to use discharging formula for capacitor v mean at any given time this is equal to v naught the maximum value of v times e to the power of minus t this is the discharging time over tau so this is the time constant we can plug in values here we have value of v across capacitor after 8.0 milliseconds that is 3.2 initial value is 4 so here we have e to the power of minus 8.0 divided by tau as this is in milliseconds so value of tau also will be in milliseconds because value power of e has no units so this one has no units so no units so if the unit of this one is millisecond unit of tau also will be millisecond so this is the key concept you need to understand now from here we can simplify we can say this will be 3.2 divided by 4 this will be equal to e to the power of minus here we have 8.0 this is in milliseconds divided by tau now if we take ln on both sides so we can say ln here this will be 3.2 divided by 4 and if we take ln on this side ln e is 1 so here we will get minus this will be 8.0 divided by tau so we will get here now we can solve for tau and value of tau in this case will be equal to 36 milliseconds it cannot be less than eight less than eight because time constant is longer than this discharging time so time constant is longer than discharging time so this has to be true so this is the point here so if you have done these points you will get three marks for this question so here we have 30 Six. Part D says a sinusoidal AC power supply has a maximum power of 16 watts. State the value of the mean power when the output of the power supply is full wave rectified. So we can simply sketch first of all full wave rectified. So this is full wave rectified. So this is full wave rectified. In this case, the maximum power is given to us that is equal to 16 volts. So we can draw the line here. So this value is given to us that is equal to 16 watts. So how about the mean power? Mean power mean power of full wave rectified signal or the mean power of AC power supply that has to be equal to half of the maximum value one half of P max so P max so we have one half and here we have 16 so we will get 8.0 watts so this has to be 8.0 watts now it is given to us is half wave rectified half wave rectified means that the signal we will see it will look like this so we will see again here power half of the cycle half of the cycle there will be no power so in this case what is p mean in this case p mean so in this case for this one we will have average power that one will be 8 watts so we can say this one will be 8 watts but this half of the cycle we have no power half of the cycle we have power half of the cycle we don't have power so it means this has to be 8.0 divided by 2 so we will get 4.0
so this one has to be 4.0 watts if it is half wave rectified mean half of the cycle no power half of the cycle we have power so it has to be divided by 2 or uh, simply you can understand this is an other way to understand p mean this has to be equal to 1 4 of p max p max if it is half wave rectified so we can say for half wave rectification so half wave so important point to understand half wave rectification so we can say for half wave rectification and for full wave rectification we can say p mean or for ac power supply this has to be equal to one half of p max and this is for full wave rectification full wave rectified signal and this is also for ac power supply ac power supply so we can say ac power supply so these are two important points you need to keep in your mind to answer this type of questions in future i hope this makes sense and that's all for today's video and remaining questions i'll be uploading as soon as possible if these videos are helping you please like and subscribe because your encouragement is very important and also if you are looking for extra resources you can join patreon on patreon you will find a lot more resources see you in next video